welcome to my channel. Well, I finally found my machete. And the way I found it was, I looked in somewhere where it shouldn't have been. And I wasn't even looking for it. And that's, that's how you find things. Um, <clears throat> I was looking for an electronic component. And I've got a cardboard box back in the closet. Where I've got a bunch of cables and wires and crap like that. And uh, I was digging through. And this handle was sticking out. And I go, I've been looking for you. Because... In an apartment, you lose something this big. It's an 18-inch machete. Uh, that's, you know, it's pretty big. But if it gets in a box with a bunch of other wires and stuff on it, you'll never find it, which I didn't. All right, it's an Ontario uh, machete, which I've had for years. And uh, I've been sharpening it because... I don't know if you can see it. There were a lot of chunks in the blade. See, there's one. It's coming out. There's some more right there. And there's more and more and more. And then the blunt, the tip was pretty blunt. Um, <clears throat> it has a little bit of surface rust on it that I'll take off with sandpaper and I'll re-blue it. <clears throat> now the sheath itself is a hard plastic with drain holes in it and this one is there's nowhere on the knife where it says when it was made but on the sheath if I can get it I can't even get this thing to here we'll have to zoom in it says US 1989 Stamaco S-T-E-M-A-C-O and the thing about these sheaths were it had a nice little, you know, pivotal swivel here. It takes, you know, the old style eyelet type fastener, which, you know, went out of style a while back. And this one has a built-in um, sharpening, probably carbide or something like that. Those never work really well. In theory, you're supposed to be able to sharpen up your blade. But uh, let's see what else markings we've got right here. It says U.S. and then Ontario Knife Company. You're going to make me hold the blade, aren't you? And that's the only markings you got. The rivets have held up good. There, <clears throat> There's a lanyard loop in here, which never noticed before this nice little hook right here helps when you're swinging to help keep this thing in your hand <clears throat> these are really good now what I use this mostly for was um, brush and uh, lawn you know trimming and that's how I got a lot of that damage you know because if you're sitting there hitting grass next to concrete you know like on an edge by a road uh, you're gonna hit the edge every once in a while but I'm putting a convex edge on it with the work sharp here and it's it's taken a while but it's it's starting to get the get the chunks out of it so unfortunately cracky wasn't hiding with them now i got a refund for the uh the last uh, queen warncliffe or cracky that uh was going to come in here so that one didn't even make it that one it vanished before it even got into my mailbox. It, I had to fill out a form. Chicago Knife Works, um, this is a response I got from them. When I told them that the package was missing and that I had filled out a form, they said, all right, we're waiting for your results because we need that for our insurance and all this other stuff. All right, cool. So, you know, I had to go through the whole process of the post office. And the post office called me a few times. Each time, you know, talking to me about the package, and I told them exactly what I did, which was, you know, the first day I went in there, there was only one package, and uh, informed delivery said I had two packages. So I went back into my house, and then I, later on that night, I thought, maybe there was a key in there, which there shouldn't have been. It was a small knife, and it would have fit in the box. Maybe there was a key in there. So no, there was no key in there. The very next day, I went in and looked. A lot of times, people put misdelivered mail on top of that big 
uh, collect the, the big boxes in there. And it wasn't in there. So uh, they called another time and told me that, you know, they're having the carriers look at, you know, check other boxes and all this other stuff. And uh, the third time was the supervisor called me and said, uh, well, I'm just trying to resolve this, you know, uh, put this case to an end. Um, if you could just fill out this... Um, no, it wasn't the post office that did that. They said, all right, you know, the supervisor said they're closing the case, you know, and they're very sorry about it and all the other stuff. And uh, I told them my theory, which was I believe it was misdelivered. And the person that got it kept it. They didn't return it, you know. So probably because they got the package, thinking it was theirs, tore it open, noticed that it wasn't theirs, and then maybe felt bad about, oh, you know, I opened the package and it wasn't my mail and, you know, that's a crime and all this. I don't know what went through their thought process. Or they went, whoopee, I don't care where it came from. I got a free knife. So that's strange about I can only keep one, I can only get one Queen Warncliffe to stick around, and that's Cracky's cousin. And uh, I'm just going to have to make do with that because when I went and looked at Chicago Knife Works, I had gotten the last one. They're out of them again. And uh, so I didn't want to go to Smokey's for it, so that's why I got the uh, Queen Bartle last time. But anyways, just a heads up, that's, that's what's been going on with me. I've been sharpening this knife and, and doing stuff like that. And I'll try to get out to making uh, more video, you know, videos more often, but sometimes I just have to take a break for various reasons. <clears throat> but I'll, I'll be making more videos. Anyways... Thank you for watching and have a nice day.